Did you know that cheat meals actually help you to lose fat? Now, am I talking biologically where they increase your metabolism? Am I talking psychologically where it makes it easier to stick to the diet longer term and make it more flexible around travel, family occasions? It's actually all of the above. And I'm explaining the science behind it, how often you can have cheat meals, as well as the strategy that we've found works with our clients across hundreds of case studies. Alhamdulillah, we've actually gotten the chance to experiment this and figure out exactly what works so that by the end of this video, you can know exactly what to eat for your cheat meals, what to eat between your cheat meals, and how to get maximum fat loss with maximum enjoyment of that process and making it sustainable as well so that you can obviously go and take that into your own life and get results with it, inshallah. So the first thing is, I think a lot of people, a big objection they have to getting on a diet is the fact that they fear that they can never eat their favorite foods again because perhaps you've done certain diets in the past, the ones that are really notorious for this are keto and low carb, where when you have a cheat meal, you gain 10 pounds because when you come off keto or when you do keto and low carb, you lose a lot of water weight. When you have a cheat meal that usually has carbs because what's a cheat meal without carbs, you end up gaining a bunch of water weight from carbs. So you think you gain all this fat back because you think that you had lost fat on those diets when in reality you lost water. That's a subject for another video where we actually lose more water on those diets than fat in a lot of cases. Although some people could lose fat on it too if you do it right, but that's besides the point of this video. This video is about the cheat meals. So first off, what are the psychological and biological benefits of a cheat meal? Of course, psychologically, it gives you something to look forward to if you're eating really clean during the week. But even when we're eating clean during the week, we want to use, per my other videos, foods that actually taste good, that replicate your favorite foods and flavors while fitting the right macros and ratios for fat loss for your own specific blueprint. And of course, if you need help figuring out the same blueprint for yourself and you're interested in working with a coach, we have more details on our program in the description below. But in general, if you're eating that way, you're going to be in a calorie deficit, okay? And if you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to be losing fat. And that's how you know that you're in a calorie deficit is if you're losing fat, okay? Obviously, we're getting enough protein, so you're only losing fat, not muscle. And we talk about that in other videos. But the cool thing is that by the end of the week, you're in a pretty deep deficit. Now, here's what happens is that let's say you do a cheat meal once a week, or let's say you do a cheat meal every two weeks. If you go two weeks without a cheat meal, this can work really well for some people, but I find for most people, it's actually better to do a cheat meal once a week. Because if you go two weeks, you've been in deficit for two weeks, you get a lot more dieting fatigue. It's a lot easier to burn out, especially if you're a foodie, and especially if you have a lot of family events and eating out and travel and stuff that you just have to say no to all the time. It creates that much more resistance to where a weekly cheat meal is a lot better. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, could I have two to three per week? In maintenance, sure, but during a fat loss phase, one is pretty generous and nice, and I find that to be optimal both psychologically and biologically because while there's that psychological fatigue that's happening while you're on a diet, and again, if you're doing a diet that has foods that you actually look forward to that actually taste good, which is what we teach, then of course, there's gonna be less dieting fatigue overall to where you can usually last two to three times as long on a diet and have a much easier sustainability plan for after the diet to maintain it. But you know, the need for a cheat meal will be less. That being said though, the cheat meals are kind of used more so for flexibility and also to train you in experiencing the contrast between eating healthy food and eating unhealthy food. So for instance, let's say that I take a client and you know, he's a total foodie, he eats biryani seven days a week and that's why he's 300 pounds. Okay, and I say, cool. Actually, for a person like that, I might let them do two to three cheat meals a week. And if I just get them eating clean four to five days a week, but doing the healthy, low fat version of the biryani with higher protein, everything else, they will lose weight. But let's say a more average case, like somebody who weighs 230 pounds, right? And you know he eats biryani occasionally, he tries to watch what he eats, he tries to eat very little during the day, but then he eats a lot of biryani at night, or maybe he tries to eat healthy for the most part, but then on the weekend, everything falls apart and he ends up having to cheat three days every single weekend because he goes and visits his in-laws, his family, everything else. There are some flexibility rules that you need to follow there. And these topics always open up a lot of other topics, such as how do you eat at family gatherings? How do you eat during travel? And I have a lot of other videos on that, but in this particular case, let's say that I do teach you how to meal prep and you start meal prepping and you're meal prepping my healthy biryani and you're eating that from Sunday through Thursday. Friday comes around and you want to take your family somewhere nice after Juma. Maybe you visit your in-laws or your parents after Juma. Maybe there's a gathering you get invited to, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a bunch of oily biryani there. This is where I recommend you take your cheat meal, whether it's pizza, biryani, something. Usually the parameter for a cheat meal is we want to make sure it at least has some kind of protein in it, even if it has a crazy amount of calories. And of course, that you've been in a calorie deficit eating properly the rest of the week. What's going to happen is because you're in a deficit, what usually happens is that your muscle glycogen stores start to become depleted, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's a bad thing if it happens chronically because it's going to slow down your metabolism, your energy levels, make you look like you lost muscle, make you feel like you lost muscle because you feel weak in the gym. So it's good to top off glycogen, which is one of the benefits of a cheat meal. And that's why usually the lower fat, higher carb, higher protein cheat meals work better. But the whole point of a cheat meal is you get to enjoy yourself and eat whatever you want for the psychological aspect. And we'll talk about the physiological and biological aspects later. But the point being, 
So when you eat that cheat meal, you're gonna top off your glycogen stores because you go from being in that deficit, which was slowly depleting your glycogen stores while burning fat, although your glycogen gets less depleted as long as you keep the carbs, high fats lower on a deficit. And then you fill those glycogen stores because you just ate the surplus of fats, of carbs, of protein, of everything. Boom, it's a lot of food. Your system kind of reboots. Now, biologically as well, what happens is that there's a satiation hormone called leptin that also bumps up when you have this big cheat meal and this big enjoyable cheat meal. And so the cool thing is that leptin is a very potent fat burning hormone. And if you're chronically deprived of leptin, it signals to your body that there's some kind of famine. This is a mechanism that Allah has built into our body so that if there's actually a famine, your leptin gets low and then it suppresses your metabolism so you can survive on very little food for a long time without losing all your weight and dying okay so this is great for our ancestors if they went through famine right so like for instance you know i'm sure many of us have heard the story from the stories of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i'm sure you've heard in a sheikh lecture before where there was like two months where they didn't have any food or something like that right and there was no fires being lit in the houses of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam well allah created our bodies to be able to suppress the metabolism during those times so that we don't die but the problem is if you've been trying to starve yourself to lose weight this is actually working against you versus you can get it to work for you by number one one, not going excessively low in calories in the first place, like I teach in all the other videos, keeping your carbs and protein in there, just using the low fast to create the deficit is usually the strategy we use in most cases that I talk about in a lot of other videos in depth. But then from there, even if you follow that approach for too long, your metabolism will eventually slow down after three to six months. And of course, if you use, if you use the starving yourself approach, it might slow down within a couple weeks. Your metabolism might already be chronically slowed from chronic bad eating habits, chronic bad exercise habits, chronic lack of muscle and loss of muscle after every age after the age of 35. Might have even started earlier for you, the process of losing muscle. So it's important that we build our metabolism in all the other ways that I talk about in all the other videos. These are the prerequisites. Once that is established, then when we do the cheat meal once a week, it tops off our leptin levels so that our body stays fast. It's almost like we're tricking the body to keep the metabolism faster while gaining a psychological benefit, which is that we get to enjoy the food and not feel restricted. Because here's another thing, a big reason why a lot of people rebound after a diet is that they have to deprive themselves for such a long time, no cheat meals, no nothing, that as soon as they come off the diet, they binge for five weeks and they gain back all the weight, right? So the cheat meals also help prevent that rebound because you have it to look forward to. But the third psychological benefit is the fact that after a cheat meal, you get to feel how you used to feel when you were eating unhealthy again. You get to feel bloated, you get to feel tired, you get to feel heavy, lethargic, sluggish, poor digestion, affecting your you know, excretion, everything. And it reminds you, wow, I really don't like feeling unhealthy and tired and lethargic. I enjoy how I feel when I'm eating clean. So after you have a nice big cheat meal on Friday or on the weekend, wherever you decide to have your cheat meal, you look forward to going back to your clean eating during the week because the food tastes good and the food is really healthy and makes you feel really good, really energetic, way lighter, clearer, sharper, everything. And so you become intrinsically motivated and over time it helps to improve your relationship with food because you no longer see food as this indulgence, but rather you see food as a performance enhancer and you become intrinsically motivated to not eat these crazy, unhealthy, decadent cheat meals. So the first few cheat meals that a lot of clients do, some clients are, they're scared. They're like, oh, I'm losing weight. I'm just gonna go easy with the cheat meal. But then when they realize that they're not gonna gain weight when they do the cheat meal and they just keep losing weight, sometimes they're even lighter the day after a cheat meal because they drop stress-related water retention, which is a whole nother topic, which is another physiological benefit of the cheat meal. Sometimes you gain stress related water retention from the stress of a calorie deficit and then the cheat meal reduces that stress such that you actually drop that bloat but a lot of people they get bloated after a cheat meal for two three days and then the water subsides it drops down and then they lose weight again but the point is after a couple weeks some of those clients who are timid with the cheat meals in the beginning will then do a giant cheat meal and then they feel how much damage it did but you know they gain the confidence that hey actually i can maintain pretty nicely because it didn't affect my weight too much but they also feel physically like wow okay that didn't feel good a lot of other clients from the very beginning, they're like, oh, I got a cheat meal. Okay, I'm gonna take full advantage of this. And they almost abuse the cheat meal. They go as hard as they possibly can. How much damage can I do? But then when they feel how bad they feel in comparison with how good they feel when they're on the clean diet, this over time conditions them to associate clean eating with feeling better and helps you to create that positive feedback loop instead of resenting the process and not being able to truly experience the contrast between how you feel after the unhealthy meal once a week and how you feel when you're eating healthy the rest of the week. So this is the other advantage with the cheat meal. There are many advantages with the cheat meal psychologically and so it trains you to have a better relationship with food and to see food as a performance answer again instead of an indulgence now some people usually not men and most of you know my people who i'm speaking to here are men but i know there's a lot of women who watch my stuff too uh, or you might be sending this to your wife a lot of women have a lot of unhealthy psychological triggers around food. The, even the word cheat meal triggers them. Some women get anxiety. Some women, especially with like PTSD, they freak out when they hear the word cheat meal. Oh no, cheat. Oh, this is making food. I bet, you know, I guess hate comments all the time on Instagram. So 
If that bothers you, if it triggers you, just call it a treat meal. Treat meal. This is a psychological thing that female dietitians all over the world use with their female clients to prevent this food anxiety thing and the bad relationships with food. Boom, it fixes it. For men though, we don't mind calling it a cheat meal because most men don't have this very emotional association with food. And we all have emotional triggers with food. We all have stress eating, emotional eating. Look, when we're stressed, it affects our appetite. It either increases it and makes us want to binge and eat our sorrows away, or it makes us so anxious that we don't have an appetite. And I've experienced both of those things, the stress eating where I want to just binge and the stress eating where I'm so stressed that I can't even eat, right? So I'm not saying that I'm, because we're men, we're immune to emotions. No, that's not what it is. I'm just saying women generally get more severe disorders around food because there's a lot of pressure to be skinny as a woman. Because a man, you can still be obese, but if you're rich, you're still attractive. If you're rich in alpha, you're still attractive versus for a woman, if she's obese, her mating options and value to prospective men and even to her husband can drop quite a bit, which is why women have a lot more societal pressure to be skinnier because men are more into looks, women are more into energy protection, you know, a man having an alpha energy, being a good protector and provider, et cetera, et cetera. So the point being, not, not to go into evolutionary psychology here and evolution, not meaning, you know, the haram, you know, theory of evolution, but rather um, just the psychology behind like what causes attraction. We're not trying to go into that. What we're trying to go into is just the science behind cheat meals. So back to, uh, you know, looking at how the mechanisms by which Allah has created our body, right? So we understand leptin, we understand the psychological triggers, we understand that this helps to condition us to enjoy healthy eating better. So what does this actually look like in real life? So you cheat meal once a week, what should I have in that cheat meal? How do I need to eat during the rest of the week? Again, you need to eat clean per what I talk about in the other videos. And the cheat meal generally is best with high protein, high carbs, but don't go too crazy with the fats. But we've all had those crazy oily cheat meals and those do tend to do more damage than others. But as long as you're in a deficit, one cheat meal isn't gonna kill you. Now a whole cheat day, definitely gonna mess you up. A whole cheat day, you can undo the rest, rest of the deficit from the week. But it needs to be one single meal, okay? And how do I define a single meal? 60 to 90 minutes, okay? Set a timer. Some people say, oh, can I sit down for eight hours and that's a meal? No, that's not a meal. That's two meals or many meals that you've had in that eight hours that you're sitting down. Just because you're sitting down doesn't make it count as one meal. 60 to 90 minutes timer. You can have a drink with it. You can have a dessert with it. And drink, obviously, we as Muslims, we don't drink alcohol, but a lot of people like to drink soda, right? So you can have a soda drink with your cheat meal. Um, you know, actually, even when I used to work with non-Muslims, I mean, I was always trying to give da'wah, like, don't drink alcohol because it's bad for you and it's bad for your fat loss. Don't eat pork either because it's dirty. I used to even give the non-Muslims da'wah on this. Um, but even from a physiological perspective, when these non-Muslims drink alcohol, it causes all of the calories in their system to be stored as fat. So if they just had a cheat meal and they drink alcohol, they're going to gain a bunch of fat versus, you know, obviously, we as Muslims, we don't touch alcohol for Islamic reasons. And the biological benefit, even though we're doing it for the sake of Allah, is that that cheat meal, especially if you're lifting, which is another prerequisite, you need to be somebody who's lifting three to four days a week for you to be able to do these cheat meals and see success on your you know, results for the diet. Because you've stimulated muscle growth and because you've been in a deficit all week, your muscles are hungry to absorb that up. So this is another reason why we can get away with these cheat meals because we're lifting as long as it's only once a week. So most of that's gonna go to muscle. It's gonna top off that muscle glycogen, which we're also stimulating the production of as a result of you know the fact that we're lifting. And so there's a lot of different reasons and benefits within that. So you need to be lifting. You need to be in a deficit during the week with enough protein as well. And you need to be training properly. And you also need to make sure that the cheat meal is 60 to 90 minutes. There are certain best practices for the cheat meal, but at the end of the day, it's cheat meal, so enjoy it, right? Um, strategically try to time it with family stuff. S uh, see the other videos on like how to eat at family gatherings if it's outside the cheat meal, which is we usually just avoid the carbs, even though I'm usually a big fan of carbs. We wanna go no carb, high protein, high fiber at family gatherings because everything's cooked in oil. So if we have carbs and oil, it becomes a cheat meal because it's gonna be too many calories versus we can hit our protein and calorie requirements, even though it's not ideal that the fats are high and the carbs are low versus it's more ideal that the fats are low and carbs are high. That's okay. This is how we can eat at family gatherings and then make sure to get your fiber in too. And then uh, from there, you know, that's, that's kind of the cheat meal. And again, it's beneficial because psych biologically it fills your glycogen stores, it tops off your leptin, it keeps your metabolism fast, it helps your muscles grow and recover, uh, which also helps your metabolism stay faster and get faster. Uh, psychologically, it helps to recondition you to be conditioned to liking and enjoying healthy food. It gives you a light at the end of the tunnel and makes you not feel restricted. It helps you to not get that psychological factor of wanting to binge after you finish the diet. It conditions you again to enjoy healthy eating because you see the contrast um, and it's enjoyable. So it makes the process a lot more fun. So if the fact that you feel like you have to sacrifice all your favorite foods for forever on a diet has been something that has stopped you from getting on a diet and caused you to procrastinate, don't worry. All you need to do is have a cheat meal once a week and then follow the you know healthy meal prep guidelines we talk about the other things where you can make biryani, you can make samosas, you can make makluba, you can make fried chicken, you can make any burgers even. You can make any food that you like and you can make it macro friendly if you just follow our recipes and our principles and we teach this to our clients inside the program as well, which again, the link for more info on that if you're somebody who's interested in moving forward on coaching is below. Now, 
Um, that, and that basically just sums up the cheat meal. So you can have those cheat meals once a week. It's really enjoyable. Once you go into maintenance, you can even have cheat meals more than once a week. But again, that's ba the basics, the rundown on cheat meals. I hope that this was beneficial and insightful. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. I got to head over to the her now, but inshallah, uh, what I'll do is I'll attach two relevant videos here so that you have some more further education to do to help you get the foundations down. I think I'll do a lifting video here. So you understand how to lift because lifting is a prerequisite to do cheat meals. If you don't lift, your cheat meal is going to get stored as fat versus when you lift your nutrient partitioning gets better, which helps you to obviously gain muscle from the cheat meal instead of gaining fat and getting the leptin benefits, psychological benefits, all the other physical and mental benefits. And then I'll attach another relevant video here. Inshallah, I'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.